This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody! This is episode, what is it, 90, 98? Holy shit, we're like two away from 100. Oh my god. 90 million. Yes. And as you heard, that is my co-host this week, The Omega. Hello, hello. Yes. Oh, it's been it's been a couple of weeks since I've actually been able to put one out. Uh, it was like last week, life just kicked us all in the face and the chest and the balls, if we have them. And there just, was issues. Yes, there was a lot of issues. So uh, that ended up not happening. It ended up, um, at least the stuff on my end, ended up uh, postponing the Port Charlie podcast, which I j- typically record the same night as this show. So it's like, life happened to me all over the place. Life happened to you all over the place. And then, as a result of that, we have, like, all of this news here. News. It's just... Like, everything in the world is happening. Yes, everything in the world. Oh my god. And, and and my dumbass didn't put some of them in the notes. <laughs> uh, but like uh, the one one thing I do remember though, it was like uh, I think one of the producers for Tosh Point or some such was killed by by a bunch of uh, overzealous cops. What? Or something like I that. I don't think that at all. Yeah, I think it was like the L.A. County cops or whatever. They were they were trying to stop a, a guy who was stabbing a whole bunch of people. And the producer of Tosh.0 I, – I, I say producer. I don't remember exactly what he did. But um, but he was one of the victims, and he was – he and some other guy were, were coming out. The guy in front of him obviously had been hurt or whatever, and they saw the producer guy behind him, and they – the cops assumed that the producer was the stabber, and they just opened fire and killed him. Jesus. It's like, okay – if you fear for your life, okay, that that's one thing. If you fear for the life of the person in front of him, that's fine. You have tasers. You have less lethal means. And then at yeah, least yeah, if a person doesn't have a gun, if they have a knife, like you automatically win because you have a gun. So um... yeah, but no, I, I remember hearing like like little bits and pieces of it, like saying you know the cops were in fear of lo- fear of their lives or what. It's like you the person. You you have suspected him of having a knife. You guys have guns and tasers. Mm. And I've also well, heard... I mean, I know that this doesn't like make it better, but the family can always, you know, there can always be a lawsuit. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure. That so even if be... there's nothing criminal, at least I don't know. Yeah, and I've also heard that the you know how cops still have like the dashboard cams or whatever, and some cops are actually having to wear like the lapel cams or whatever. So they could be recorded while they're on duty, which mm-hmm. is a really good fucking idea. But apparently, some cops don't think that way. Well, I, I saw, and of course, I took this with a grain of salt because it was from Facebook. But there's yeah. a picture that's been going around of like so and so county somewhere or other, where um they their their mu- local municipality passed a law that says they have to wear the pal cameras, and all of a sudden, like police brutality charges and like you know violent altercations with people dropped a certain percentage. Yeah. So I'm not. I don't know if it's true or not, but I saw it on Facebook. So, I, I I would like to think it would be. I don't have the numbers to back it up, unfortunately. But it, there is an instance, and and I admit I got this story. I saw it on the Young Turks. So again, that's another grain of salt you can take right there. But they're they're just doing this, and you'd think first per at least somebody like me. First thing you would think of is okay, they they want to do some illegal shit like beat up some unarmed black people or something, because you know that happens. And and one thing they did bring up is like it's not necessarily that. Maybe they want to go to a strip club while they're on the job or, or just find some hooker and have sex with her on the side of the road or something. Well, that's you know. kind of illegal too. Yeah, it, it's still illegal. It, it's just not as – it's not as violent as what your first thought may be. True. So it's still wrong. They still need the cameras, and the ones that are disabling the cameras so they can continue to get away with this bullshit, they, they need to be slapped and said, hey, no, you are the reason why they're on in the first place because you know, the public in general is not trusting of you right now. I mean obviously when you're in the bathroom, you know. Yeah, obviously, which of course if they want a loophole, there's a little one right there, but you know <laughs> – but of course, leading up to that little loophole, they'd have to do they'd have to do some serious maneuvering. Sure. Yeah. 
Uh. I'll meet you in the bathroom. Don't tell the teacher. <laughs> yes, pretty much. Ah, <laughs> uh. uh, yeah, and, and there are some there are some uh, cop stories in here too. Again, two weeks worth of stories. I feel like I might have accidentally oversaturated it <laughs> just a little yeah. bit, but uh, but at least we have plenty of material. Uh, I do have one shout out though, and lately I've been on a portal kick. Uh, loving to play the hell out of Portal. I've, I think I've mentioned in a previous episode. I got to meet, meet uh, Ellen McLean at Magfest this past year. Oh yeah, that's right. And went to her panel. She is awesome. I love her voice. I I, I want to make love to her voice. It is. Was awesome. it a triumph? Yes, it was. <laughs> it was a triumph for me. It's also a triumph for uh, my girlfriend Becky, who is an who is a big big damn Portal fan, bigger than me. See, so I've never played Portal. It's fun. Because I'm not good at puzzles. <laughs> I'm good at give me a really big sword or a mech or magical powers and I will go out and kick some ass for you, but the second a puzzle gets involved, I'm like Ugh, I don't have time for this. I have to save the world. Oh, where's the walkthrough? Yeah. <laughs> I'm such it's so bad. Uh although although with Portal, you know, the the, the first one it's short. So it's short. You have like 19 plus areas you go through. Comparatively speaking, it's a short game. I mean, and... I know what you have to know about it. The cake's a lie. There's a companion cube. Blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And you got the little turrets that are cute, and they kill you. They they will... cute and kill you. Don't sound like they should go together. But they do. They sound cute. You pick one up, and, and he says, "Put me down," and then you drop it, and it just screams and, and fires randomly until it shuts down. Oh. Although, although the second portal can game, you make a portal be under the turret so that the turret falls into nothingness? You'd have to put a portal under it and then have an outer portal somewhere else, and you can pretty much accomplish the same thing. Okay, that, I could do that. Okay. <laughs> uh, and of course, the game has areas where you can't readily do that, unfortunately. But if you do it right, <laughs> oh, but oh god. But uh, I bring up Portal because uh, I recently uh, I recently found a uh, actually it was it was not a video that was posted on Tumblr it was just the sound file but the video you can find on YouTube by the user XO Gamer with two R's and it is a music box version of the ending song uh, Still Alive hmm. and it is it's great it's something it's something I, I I might try it tonight just put it on my iPod and try and go to sleep and listen to it. It's very, very calming and relaxing to me. Uh, so uh, do you have any shout-outs this week? Uh, uh, I came unprepared. <laughs> um, shit. Uh, yes, well then. No. Actually, no, I do. I actually, And she's not a part of their universe. But um, I love Dragon Age. Mm -hmm. That's all that Hagen and I have been talking about on Lesbian Talk recently. But um, there is a YouTuber who um, – she does a lot of stuff about Dragon Age, like speculations on uh, Inquisition, which is the game's coming out in the fall. And she's been doing live blog updates from uh, – for she's a Paxis. Uh, and her name is Lady Insanity on YouTube, and you should totally follow her because she's really professional and she knows a lot of stuff. So hmm. Nice. Oh, and there's, there's one other show that recently – I think the first episode went up last night with uh, Lady Spaz and her friend – what was it? What was it? Late Night with Lesbians, I think it was. Mm. It went up last night, and right before we started recording, I've, I've also heard that YouTube's giving her shit too. I don't know why. Like copyright was? I don't know. I, apparently, I went to go and check the video earlier, and and wasn't there. At least not yeah. when I checked it. But it, it's it's weird. It's like really, what what the hell? What the hell, YouTube? Well, lesbian talks on YouTube. Yeah, and and so is this show, and which, by the way, speaking of being on things, I finally I finally uh, got myself together, and this show and the Poor Charlie podcast have been submitted to iTunes. Yeah, iTunes. I have so many issues with that because I I am approved as a podcast, but it draws from an R, my the RSS on my site, which will only let me do thirty at a time. Mm -hmm. Unless I upgrade, and upgrading is not a problem because I already pay for the service anyway. Yeah. But I would have to totally redo my website on the new thingy, and I just haven't done that yet. So yeah, I know I know WordPress makes it easier, considering my site's yeah. based on WordPress. Um, I, I think right now though it's basically ten at a time. 
I want to say I should be able to revamp that a little later. I'm not sure, but I'll see well, what I can do about that. Allegedly, I'll be able to do 150 at a time on a, on a page, mm-hmm. but I have to. I'm actually considering going to one of the peoples that we know who have web skills and, and being like, "Tell me how much money I can throw at you to make it better." <laughs> CSS makes my head hurt. Yeah. Ah. Oh. Fix it. Make it be pretty. I love you. Okay. What's your PayPal? <laughs> Indeed, but but yeah, I mean. Oh, I, I also go through FeedBurner as well, one of the Google services. So I just take like take the main page for uh, well, well, let's say Thespian Talk, run it through FeedBurner. It does the thing, and you submit their link to uh, iTunes, and there you go. Hmm. It's easy as pie. <laughs> Which means, Cat, if you're listening, there you go. If you want to get Nerd to the Third on there, I don't know how easy it would be going through a Tig with Tig though, but hmm. it's worth a shot, I suppose. Oh man. Say is hopefully look you'll see this you'll see uh, Port Charlie podcast on iTunes. I'm working on constructive deconstruction, but we're still you know we're, we're, we I want to kind of staple down a co a, a third co-host before we actually get into uh, putting it on see, iTunes. This is the problem. This is why nobody wants to work with you if you're stapling people. Yeah. Yeah. How 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 did those staples come out? By the way, did they come out okay? I have one of those little thingies that looks like a, like teeth, so I pulled them out because I'm hardcore. Good. <laughs> I've never, I've never, okay, very few times in my life have I actually used stapled teeth for anything other than going, look, yum, 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 yum. I know, right? I mean, I mean I've used it sometimes because, you know, I've, I've helped at my dad's insurance office every now and then. And, of course, you'd have to use those every now and then. But beyond that, I'd sit there for like five hours and say, nom, 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 nom. Exactly. Nom the nose. <laughs> <laughs> and then if it could have a, if you had one of those hair clips that like has the same thing but it looks like even more teeth, they mm-hmm. could have a battle. Oh yes. Someone who can do stop motion, get on that. Because <laughs> I love I love doing stop motion, but my camera is not optimized for it. So if anyone does out there, get on that. I watch Sweet. shit out of that. Oh man, that that would be great. And and who knows, maybe it's out there already. If it's out there, right in the show. Let it us probably know. is. I should. Have... Yeah. Let us know. <laughs> yes. So with all of that, let's go ahead and hit our news stories this week. We got a bunch of them. We might not even get through all of them, but we'll try. You need a sound bite like like two has for the news. Like, ah, oh, fucking news. I Jesus, used, Florida. Yeah. You know, I used to have them when when we did it in more of a lifestyle, although it was helpful that back in the older days – we, I actually did it with people who were physically in the room. Nowadays, Correct. it's not Correct. as easy, but I'm, I'm still working on ways to get it to where it'll work properly, to where we can both hear the sounders and, and all of that. I think I just need a new mixer. <laughs> oh, but but that, those, those are things to, uh, to work on in the future as I get money. Oh, but our first news story is apparently out of Portland because – Sir Giorgio, Sir Giorgio Clarity, a Portland pimp, has filed a lawsuit against Nike for not placing a warning label in their shoes specifying that they could be used as a dangerous weapon. Continue. The lawsuit was filed after Clarity was sentenced to 100 years in prison for brutally beating a John with his Nike sneaker. He is seeking... He is seeking $100 million for what he believes was the shoe manufacturer's oversight. Just do it. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Oh, my God. There's so much that's fabulous about this. And I think we need to start with the fact that his name is Sir Giorgio. Yeah. And (laughs) second of all, what's he going to do with that money? From prison. You like, I mean, judge? Well, here's the thing, though. Like, you can, if they have, like, commissaries and stuff like that. So you can spend money on the inside for, like, cigarettes and magazines and shit. But, like, $100 million is, I mean, I know he's going to be there for 100 years, but that, that, that's a lot of cigarettes. Yeah. And he's probably not going to be alive to really appreciate it after 100 years. I mean, it's just, I mean, people Second don't all, usually live too long after 100. Did he never play Clue? You know, did he never, you know, oh, it was Colonel Mustard in the library with the candlestick, with the bowling ball, with the, I don't know. But 
you don't need a everything can kill you. Mm-hmm. You just have to try hard enough. You don't need a warning. Yeah, there, there, there is no warning that's needed. It's just no. I'm sure the lawyers over at Nike are laughing their asses off right now. Still laughing their asses off right now. I mean, I can look around just my just my immediate area within arm's reach. Let's see, in arm's reach, there is the router. I could kill somebody with that. The Wii could definitely kill somebody with the Wii. Oh yeah. Um, let's especially the Wii Mote and the Nunchuck. Just slap those together. Hey, you can choke a bitch with it. You know, same with the controllers, my USB controllers, my camera, well, one of my cameras, my iPad, my can of ginger ale, yeah, just, just, or, or even the CPU itself. Just toss it at somebody and brain them. It is so ridiculously easy to hurt or kill someone with anything in the world. Yes. And so. we don't need that kind of a label on everything because humanity, in general, is not that stupid. We're stupid, but we're not that stupid. I don't think Sir Giorgio came with a great big helping of brains. No. I, I, I do not know what to what family he was born into. When he when he oozed his way out of the tanning bed. No. He probably, probably is tan as fuck. <laughs> probably is. Sir Giorgio. Although he is in Portland. Maybe he's not as tan as we think he is. Hmm. That's true. Uh, so uh, now... This story and the next story have a couple of shots ready because we're going to Florida. And even worse, this is my neck of the woods, as in the panhandle, the taint. The oh, taint. lordy. Yes, the taint. Uh, Fort Walton Beach. A local family says their afternoon at a local park was ruined after a homeless person complained to police that they were lying down. Wait, what? Uh, yeah. Under the city code... Visitors to parks cannot sleep or protractedly lounge on seats, benches, or other areas. Michelle McCormick said she and her husband were at Fort Walton Landing Saturday with two young children. She said her husband was wrestling with them when a police officer approached. She walked up to us and said, Sir, I'm going to have to tell you to get up. There is an ordinance against lying down in the park, McCormick said. My husband was just incredulous. Police Sergeant Bill Royal said the officer was responding to a complaint from a park visitor. We received a phone call, and it was a homeless person, he said. He was complaining about individuals lying on blankets near the gazebo. Call log indicates the officer made the family aware of the city ordinance that prohibits lying down in the park. And the the officer apparently was pleasant enough and pleasant but firm, basically. And the officials say the ordinance is intended to keep people from sleeping in the park and interfering with the use of local parks, i.e., from what I'm gathering – it's an anti-homeless person thing. I know exactly where this came from. Mm-hmm. It was a homeless guy who had been told, "Yeah, there's just, there's an ordinance, you can't can't lie down here." Who is now, I bet you, fucking determined to call out every single person, you know, who's sitting or lying down at all. Yeah. Like you know, one of those like, fine, okay, it's against the rule. Well, I'm gonna make such a big fuss about it that eventually, you know, some family or something is gonna end up suing the city about it. Yeah, which and and I love this. I love this line from uh, one of the officers. Uh, There's a safety factor. You may trip someone. Okay, it's kind of a legitimate concern given certain circumstances, but really, that's the only thing you can come up with. Nothing. If that about... was true, this would be in every park in America. And let's be honest. It's not... Yeah. And it's and, – and you know it's really just so homeless people have one less – well, not – okay, not just that. But you know, it, 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 it takes away a spot for homeless people to sleep at night. It's probably very – it is probably you know, anti-vagrancy and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I bet if the homeless guy hadn't even said anything, the police in the park wouldn't have even cared. But yeah. now they're like, oh, fine, because they know that if they don't, the guy will turn around and say the next time they bust him, yeah, well, you know, I called in a report. And you guys didn't do anything. So it's kind of like in this instance, I feel bad for the family because they're like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. And I feel bad for that police officer because they're like, I'm damned if I do. I'm damned if I don't. Yeah. So I don't I don't blame the officer or, or the police in general, the, one, the ones that are actually doing their job and just enforcing the law. I blame whoever wrote the law in the first place because it's it's. Kind of stupid. I mean, it's like, okay, what do you expect them to do? If and this is Fort Walton Beach. This is in the taint of Florida. It's sort of a larger city. It's not too awful large, but it's not large enough. I don't imagine it would have too many homeless shelters. Or if they do, maybe they don't have enough room. People need a place to go and sleep. 
You know, they can't just – obviously can't sleep just anywhere, and right. uh, and for some, the park might be a good place for them to sleep. But nope, nope, you took that away from them because people might trip over them. It's like, really? Is this going to be an issue? And then someone will sue the city because there weren't signs in all the rocks that you might trip and do harm to yourself. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> if there was. I wasn't warned about this here rock. Yeah. Well, 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 uh, well. Here, here, here's some advice for the future. If you want to, you know, worry about rocks and whether or not you're going to trip over them, um, you, you look in the mirror, and you see those two uh, white, white, uh, ovalish things that are staring back at you. Those are your eyes. You use those to see. Madness, and look. I say. Yes. It madness. Makes madness, but it works. Oh. And not far from Fort Walton Beach is Pensacola, which is where our next story takes place because <laughs> it's, it, it starts out horrible. This guy, uh, Jerry Allen Bradford, he, he, he's, he's been treated, being treated actually at a hospital for a gunshot wound to his wrist. And this was after the guy was you know, just taking puppies from what I'm, under, what I'm reading here. It, he's just, you know, take them out and just – shoot him because you couldn't find him a home you know you take him out back shoot him throw him in a shallow grave well this one puppy I, I i i'm pretty sure in the reality it's an accident but i would like to think that this puppy just got tired of his bullshit and pulled the trigger because because this puppy just somehow just kind of squirmed out put the paw on the trigger and shot the guy that's not a puppy that's batman puppy Bat puppy. A bat puppy. <laughs> He's good. Is that that's a crime in Florida, right? He can be charged for that, right? Yeah. I think – I don't remember if he's going to be charged. I'm, I'm assuming he is. The story doesn't really say. I'm not seeing. But there were, there were I think – there were, there were a few other puppies. Uh, three puppies were in a shallow grave. And then the other four Jesus. appeared to be in good health and were taken away by Escambia County Animal Control, which planned to make them available for adoption. So the ones that survived, you know, they're they're up for adoption. And by the time this goes up, they may already have been adopted. I don't know. I hope so, because yeah, it. I, I find that about as bad as somebody putting an animal to sleep because they're moving away and can't take the animal with them. That's just horrifying. That is. Like, I mean, I know that. I know that. You know, you have a crisis. These days where no fill shelters, no, no kill shelters are full and, you know, the SPCA, they do what they can, but eventually they do have to euthanize. Yeah. But, but they're puppies and puppies have a hell of a better chance of getting adopted yeah. than a, like a three-year-old dog or something like that. Yeah. It's just, oh my God. I mean, and, and, and this might sound heartless, but even if you couldn't find them anywhere, just turn them loose. Yeah. It's 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 better than shooting them in the head. Yeah, at least turning them loose, they have a chance. They will like they adapt. Find stuff to eat, you know. Maybe get caught by the dog catcher and taken in anyway. I mean, it, it... yeah, Jesus. they they will they they will survive on their own, some way, shape, or form. And the ones that don't, unfortunately, well, you'll you'll find them on the side of the road, and and you poke it, and it won't move, and it'll be sad. It'll be very sad. But I just. Wow. It's like yeah. killing an animal. It's like killing a baby. I mean, there's this is a creature that depends on you for for life. You know, you're the one that makes the call. It doesn't have our level of intelligence. It's like, oh, this poor helpless creature, I'll just kill it because I can. Yeah, because, you know, why not? You know, I mean, <laughs> I mean, hey, you kill you kill you kill practically harmless slimes in video games. So what, why not kill a practically harmless animal in real life? No, not the same thing. Uh, and speaking of things that are really disgusting, th this this was one of those that I couldn't even put the full story into my news file. I only had to put the link. Yeah, I saw the link, and then I was like, "What? Why is there just a link?" There? Yeah, it, it the the story itself is kind of long, but it, it, we're not we're odds are we're not going to need the entire article. Because by this point, I'm sure everybody's heard of this fucker, the, 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 this subhuman scum. Uh, ha, 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 ha. 
Oh, this guy. He is he is a wealthy DuPont heir. I'm trying to see what what, what is They're the guy's all name. Bug fuck crazy. Because yes. I remember I remember when the one who was obsessed with wrestling murdered that that wrestler and he was tried at the media courthouse because it was the county seat. I remember that. So we used to drive past his farm every day and drop my sister off. Oh wow. The DuPonts are out of the damn minds. Yeah, they are. If you're a and, DuPont rich, sure. Yes. But uh the, the, the actual guy's name is uh Robert H. Richards the Fourth. Uh, well, yeah, you know, people with, with with the suffix there, you know, they they, they, they can't be all sane. Wait a minute. <laughs> Are you a no. junior? No, I am a Trey. Oh. Which if you follow me on Twitter you you, you would know that. <laughs> I'm a unique individual. Ain't nobody got my name. Yeah, except my father and my grandfather. <laughs> no 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 not you. Oh, you. Me. oh you do. Well yeah. I am I'm unique. Whoop. All right. What'd he do? So okay. This guy he 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 got busted for raping his three year old daughter. I heard about this. Yes, you did, and I know everybody else is 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 screaming that too. We all heard about this. Yes, and now you get to hear my full thoughts on this. Uh, cause cause see, not only did he get busted for raping his three year old daughter, the superior court judge Jan Jordan, let 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 that name burn in your mind. She, 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 she sentenced him to probation for raping a three-year-old girl. Probation. And here's the reason why. Because he would not fare well in prison. That's the point. That's exactly the point. You see, this guy, I'm looking at him. He looks like an older, blonde, douchier version of, of, of Patton Oswalt. Seriously, the, the resemblance is uncanny to me. I, I, I may be wrong. But this guy right here, he should be in prison. He should – you know you know what? When it comes to child rapists, I, I am probably a little crueler than most. I say toss him in the gen pop and let them know what the fuck he did. Because they don't give a sh because because they do not stand for that bullshit. Even so the evil Ar has the Aryan Brotherhood and M13 and the Black Panthers and everybody will come together to beat your ass. Yes, the KKK will. He will unite with. the block. Yes, you will unite them in their anger. Yeah. Ooh, it's just 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 no no. The reason why it became public this this month is uh his ex-wife tracy filed a lawsuit seeking compensatory and punitive damages for the abuse of his daughter and then all this came out and 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 we all know how we're reacting this 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 piece of slime he's walking around because oh he wouldn't fare well in prison well guess what i wouldn't fare well in prison either but if i did the same thing he did do you think the judge is going to look down on me and say oh poor baby he's not going to fare well let's let's let him off on probation no so here's the question that i have is there some kind of like can the can the county review that you know because i've heard of i've heard of this happen where like the it turned out later that the judge has been on drugs for years or had been taking kickbacks or you know, had a gambling problem, was being blackmailed and stuff like that. And every single one of those cases was invalidated, had to be retried and resentenced. Mm -hmm. So can they con can they conduct some kind of judicial review? I hope so. Um, let's just see. I'm I'm trying to look and see if there's anything that can be that can be done in this article. Otherwise <laughs> anonymous, you know what to do. Yes. Make this guy's life a living hell. Now now I did say just a couple of minutes ago, you know, throw him in the gen pop and let them have their way with him. Which, yes, I will do that. But those are also guys that are already in prison. Those of us out here, we can do much worse, and we don't even have to touch him. We could do everything legally to to make his life a living hell. Psychological warfare, I think, is still legal, at least for this piece of scum. I think. If I'm wrong, please tell me so. <laughs> oh, but yeah, this this guy, no, 
Uh-uh. And, the, and this goes into another problem with, like, this whole affluenza thing, quote-unquote. This is another case of that. And it's like, I have money. I won't fare well in prison. Okay, here you go. No. No, it, do, it should not matter who, who, who your family is. It doesn't, shouldn't matter how much money you have. You, you do something that, that, that warrants prison time, you go to prison. And, and, you go for a long time. Yeah. This guy should be locked up for life. I mean, for Christ's sake, we the first story was Sir Giorgio, the pimp, who got 100 years for beating a guy, not even murdering a guy, beating a guy with a shoe, with a Nike sneaker. <laughs> this guy rapes a three-year-old. I'm like, well, you can have probation snippings. I mean... I yeah. Know. One's a pimp. The other one's an heir to the DuPont. I, I, I think they're like some kind of chemical thing or whatever yeah well they uh the dupont family actually was one of the early um like merchant textile families in the set of the delaware valley mm -hmm. like um the duponts the croziers uh the leapers um and eventually uh the, i think this was in around the turn of the century you'd have to google this look up the wiki on it but around the turn of the century was when um uh, dupont chemical was founded but yeah. they were they were wealthy from colonial times Right. So, yeah, so there is a lot of history behind it, but I mean, even still, even with all that history, this guy, he should be in prison. He, he should be in there. He should be in there with Gen Pop because, hey, you know what? I have very little tolerance, uh, very little to no tolerance for, for child rapists. I'm sorry. It's just no. And, and, and one of the things that the judge passed down was like, he needs rehabilitation. Okay, fine, but you still toss him in prison. Well, he better at least be a registered sex offender. Yeah. Hey, I, I I don't see anything about whether or not he is. I hope he is. He better be. What what state was this? Had to be Delaware, or Pennsylvania, or Maryland. Um, let's see. Uh, Jan Jordan. Um, trying to see if there is anything anything that says it. Um, da 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 da. Uh, he owns a mansion in Greenville. I don't know. Oh, duh! It's on the damn website name. It's Delaware. <laughs> Oh, that was a fail on me. So we'd have to look up what the, you know, what the the, the rules are on um, sex offenders in Delaware. But there's there's no way he wouldn't have to register. There's there's, yeah. there's no way. Yeah, and even if they even if he didn't legally have to register, everybody knows anyway. So it's it's not like he can't hide from it. It's not like people all over the world, all over the Delaware or the country have to live in ignorance for this unless it's unless they're total fucking luddites and even then the luddites will look going to be like oh hey you're that you're that child rapist guy that that has all the money that got out on probation because you wouldn't fare well in prison well how about i come and kick your ass and give you a taste of what you missed you know but yeah uh, so he he's see now is when we need batman yes we do need batman I don't have a bat signal. Damn it. Somebody in Delaware, if you got a bat signal, put it up there. Because, you know, Batman would beat the shit out of him. Yes, he would. He, he'd let him live, but he'd beat the shit out of him first. Oh, yeah. And and that is another thing. You know, I, I, I mentioned throwing him to the gen pop and everything. Hopefully they would let him live and then beat the crap out of him again and then beat the crap out of him again and so on and so forth for as long as possible. Or, you know, you know put him with a big old guy named Bubba. Yeah, and, see, and let him see what it's like to not consent night after night after night. Yeah, see, see, see. Uh, I, I, I want him to suffer. Because here's the thing about here's the thing about three year olds. They're still at the stage where if you've given the book to the nice lady cashier, it's gone forever, and you better start crying. Mm -hmm. That is so far away from any kind of consent for anything. That's again like the puppies we were talking about. Mm -hmm. Yep. Ah. Uh. Like, so, three-year-old is, like, still, oh, I better stick my finger in the electrical socket kind of age. Mm-hmm. Except, except, oh. he, he, except this guy, he took advantage of that, and he stuck his finger somewhere else and didn't need to go. That was terrible, and you should feel terrible. Yes, uh, but not as terrible as he does. That's true. That's true. Uh, but on a, on a slightly lighter note, it's another one of those stories that I couldn't really copy and paste into the thing. In fact, I found it just today. The day we recorded it. This one's out of Oklahoma. Oh, Oklahoma. Okay. <laughs> yes. I'm, contract I'm contractually obligated. <laughs> I don't uh, know by what contract, so don't ask. But, mm. I don't know either. 
Uh, but Oklahoma protesters threatened to secede from the Union if Neil deGrasse Tyson's Cosmos is not canceled. Oh, please, please, please try it. Do it. <laughs> Come at me, bro. Yes. Oh. Oh, so uh, this is out of uh, Saddlebridge Township in Oklahoma, by the way. Furious parents and citizens of Oklahoma took to the streets early Thursday protesting against Neil deGrasse Tyson's Cosmos. Protesters allege that the show is blatantly promoting an anti-creationist agenda and is standing against the Judeo-Christian mores and values of the Saddleback Township community and others nationwide. All right, I have something to say. First Go of ahead. all, for the rest of this story, everyone should imagine – the picture of him with the, you know, look out, we got a badass over here. But, um, so here's the thing. So the original Cosmos uh, it ran in the 70s, right? I think so, yeah. Okay. So we're always talking about how much more conservative the country was of several decades ago. And how now, you know, things are a lot more liberal and a lot more good and things like that. So I don't think that's true because I don't recall hearing that, and I wouldn't have heard because I wasn't alive then, but... I don't think that there was anyone protesting Carl Sagan in the 70s. I don't remember people protesting Bill Nye the Science Guy, like originally, not right now. Like, you know, I don't remember people protesting Mr. Wizard. What the fuck is wrong with this country? Like, what the? I don't know. It's just, I went, oh, I don't, I don't think, I don't think I can prove this and then probably way All off right. base here, but I'm willing to bet that they're, they're not really protesting against science or, or anti-creationists. Neil deGrasse Tyson, for those who don't know, he's a black guy. The other three guys you, we mentioned, or you mentioned rather, they're white guys. They that's don't true. want a black guy teaching them science because that's some devil shit. Well, here's the last question that I have about the story. Yes. Let me, let me look at the URL. But, I mean, is this the case of this could have been something from The Onion that was picked up locally by everybody? I, 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 I kind of hope that it turns out to be satire. I would like to be wrong and, and be proven that way. Because I, I did really see a story going around on Facebook, and of course, you know, I, I immediately Googled it and found that, you know, this was satire. That was saying that Kansas, the state of Kansas, was trying to pass a bill that would make showing Cosmos illegal. I remember that. I, I think I And that's what that turned out to be a hoax. Yeah. But this, so far, I, I, I've. Not seen it. Um, I've I've not seen it say whether or not it's satire. Um, but if if it if it is satire, then I'm going to be just <laughs> then 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 I'm going to say you know what good 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 job there. Um, uh, just a quick glance over it. Uh, I'm not seeing anything that says whether or not. It's satire, so I, I don't know about this particular site. Um, KStreet607.com is, is is the – oh, pardon me, the URL that we're at there. So if, if you want to check it out for yourself, you can. But there, there there's actually a few things uh, later on down in the story that uh, – let's see. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, like the last part here, the parents of Saddlebridge Community – continue to feel Cosmos is inappropriate material for television and therefore must be removed from all programming within the state. Following are examples of the dangers pre present dangers presence by Cosmos, a space journey. Uh, I think they mean presented. Uh, number one, cussing. There's, there's swear words? I, I see, I, like, that supernova, god damn it, let me just tell you what. Like, I... I don't know. I would assume on the show itself there isn't, but they do have a quote that is credited to uh, to Tyson. To be scientifically literate is to empower yourself to know when someone else is full of bullshit. That's that's a quote they credited to him. Yeah, but just because he said it at one point in time doesn't mean that he said it on the show. Right. And again, it's probably you know it's, it's probably during a time where kids would be watching anyway, and parents all over the country, whatever whatever reason. They, they have a big stick up their ass about people saying curse words to or in front of their children. I don't know why. They're just words. But that all being well, said – Let's just do it like how they, they do it in, in the UK where they have the watershed. And after the watershed time, you can have pretty much whatever you fucking want on TV. Yeah. And if people complain, then the thing is why your kids up so late. It's after the watershed. So I like that. I like yeah. how that is. Yeah. 
And, and the, the caption they have under this one it says, Tyson cusses at our children and scares them into his beliefs. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I... I, I, How I, I, I are... scared into, like... Okay, like, God damn are... it, you don't do not see the fucking moon in the sky. That's a <laughs> fucking planet. Actually, it's yes. not a planet, it's a moon, but... Yes. You see Saturn? Saturn's got fucking moons, too. <laughs> yes, don't okay. even get me started on Jupiter. Yeah, let me let me just walk out, because cause we have... Where, where, I'm, where I'm living now, right now, two of the kids are, are around, and they're the quiet ones. So I can walk out to there. I probably say the word fuck to them, and they probably look at me like, why did you say that? Well, I'm scared. Although one of them is one of the cousins that told her brother that she will eat his soul, so I don't think it would be that wow. effective. <laughs> she didn't know any better, and my mom freaked out. I'm laughing, by the way. <laughs> you know, my, my little cousin Luke, who he is now, uh, I think – junior or senior in college, but uh, when he was little, my mom was watching after him for a day, and he watched a lot of TV when he was little, like a lot of TV. So she was changing his diaper, and he looks at me and goes, guess what, Aunt Pat? And she goes, what? And he goes, I'm the Dark Prince. And she goes, that's nice, hon. Oh, God. <laughs> he, watched, he watched a lot of anime when he was a kid. Indeed. Huh. But, uh, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and leave that story, because I, I do want to get a couple of other ones in. Oh, that's uh, cool. uh, the next one, <laughs> I have not seen Noah yet, and I don't mean Spoonie. Uh, but uh, this article, I, I forget exactly where I get it from, but uh, the, the first quote, the first line, Russell Crowe bathes in sweet, delicious Christian tears. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Noah took top spot at the box office, bringing in $44 million in domestic sales beating out Divergent and Muppets Most Wanted. But because people can't separate fantasy from reality, they went to see Noah, which this particular site reviewed, expecting it to be some sort of shot-for-shot -shot recreation of the famous passage from the world's number one best-selling piece of fiction, the Bible. Ken Ham, who you may remember from his recent debate with Bill Nye, even blogged about Ham's it. Ham. <laughs> that Cam is Ham. I don't know where I was going with that. He was none too happy. And he was even disgusted. He even says so right off the bat. I am disgusted. I'm going to come right out and say it. This movie is disgusting and evil. Paganism. Do you really want your family to see a pagan movie that portrays Noah as a psychopath who says that if his daughter-in-law's baby is a girl, then he will kill her as soon as she's born? And when two girls are born, bloodstained Noah, the man the Bible calls righteous in Genesis 7-1 brings a knife down to the head of one of the babies to kill her, and at the last minute doesn't do it. And then a bit later, Noah says he failed because he didn't kill the babies. How can we recommend this movie and then speak against abortion? Psychopathic Noah sees humans as a blight on the planet and wants to rid the world of people. You know, there, there are other people nowadays that, that feel the same way. Just saying. Well, first of all, the Old Testament is not actually like happy, fun, lovey time book. Like, it's really not. Like, I had a version when I was little. It was like the kids' version. And even then, shit got real on an alarming, you know, level. Because the God of the Old Testament fucking hated everyone. He was bastardly and crotchety. And if yeah. you didn't make him happy, he'd just like, oh, fuck, you would just kill everyone. You know? Yeah. Uh, I think Becky put it best. We were actually discussing the, the Old Testament God uh, last night. And she was, and we we came to the conclusion that the Old Testament God was just a book full of God throwing temper tantrums. Yeah, he had a book up his ass, like seriously, like you know. So, you know, he, okay, the New Testament is, I guess, a bit better where God's like, oh, well, fine. Yeah. But it's just stupid. And I I saw Hagen and and the and uh, Robin the Minion and Sarah went to go see it, and their their vlog of it is great. But the thing is that like the Bible's got some shit. But here's the thing, you know, if you're going to stand by it, you got to stand by all of it. You can't pick and choose. If you're going to be a literalist about it, you've got to be a literalist about it. Otherwise, why bother? Yeah. Now, again, Noah, the movie, from what I'm understanding, is all open to interpretation anyway. Which, the story of Noah, wasn't that based on the story of Gilgamesh? Which, I, from what I'm remembering, is supposed to be the oldest piece of fiction that's been recorded? Well, the Epic of Gilgamesh has a lot of differences, but I, I, here's the thing is there were a lot of civilizations at that time that had a flood origin story. 
Right. You know, I mean, there actually, because I wrote a paper on this in college, a lot of civilizations have, you okay, you find certain basic trends. Like there was nobody except when the gods came and made human out of clay, out of tree bark, out of water, out of nothingness, you know, like the very basic kinds of crafting things that primitive artisans would have would have had. So, of course, if an artisan can make a clay person, you know, why couldn't a god using clay make an actual person? You know, there's a lot of flood analogies. There's a lot of this kind of stuff because back then we didn't understand the weather. Shit got real. You know, Hurricane Sandy like could have been seen as the, the second coming while well, it was happening because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know when the snow is going to stop, when the rain is going to stop, when the tornadoes or wind are going to stop. If there's an earthquake, you don't know about plate tectonics. You just go, oh, my God, somebody must have shit under the wrong tree. God's pissed, mm-hmm. you know? So you see you see these, and especially in, in, in Greco-Roman myth, you know, you see people philosophically saying what we know about the world and what do we imagine about God? How must How must it be for God or goddesses? And I, that's something that's going to repeat in any kind of any kind of mythology. I mean, you know, that's what yeah. I say about that. Oh, sorry, yeah. lecture ended here. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Oh, so I'm going to skip down a few because uh, we are running low on time. This is one I I, I really this kind of will lift up a little bit. It's tragic, but but it, but it's the reasoning behind it is just hilariously silly. This one's out of Minnesota. Old Minnesota here. Yes. A Minnesota man said last week that he fatally shot his son, then tried to kill himself so they could continue the altercation in the afterlife. What? WCCO reported that a criminal complaint filed on Thursday alleged that 84-year-old Pang Si Vang shot and killed his son, 36-year-old Chue Hui Vang, last Monday after the son refused to pay to install cable television. You're just now getting up to cable? It's 2014. We watch all our TV on the internet. A a second brother told police that he came downstairs after his mother heard gunfire and found his brother apparently dead of a gunshot wound. The second brother said he wrestled a shotgun away from the father who retreated into his bedroom. After police arrived, the suspect refused to leave his room, saying that he stabbed himself in the chest. The criminal complaint alleged that Vang admitted shooting his son and stabbing himself because he did not want to settle the issue in court. He would settle the, settle the dispute with his son when they reached the afterlife. <laughs> uh, no, it, it's tragic that the son died. I, I'm really sorry that the son is da- dead, and, and, and obviously the family is traumatized, and I feel bad for them. But this old man is yes, – what, what the hell? This is probably going to make it a little bit more tragic, but it might not have been stupid. He might be senile, and that makes it even worse. That does. That that does. Because it's one thing to have that level of stupidity and ignorance. It's the other other level is if someone is, you know, special needs or they have been affected mentally in such a way that they can't tell. And that's 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 terrible. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, this is. It's like, oh, 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 you want to do it? You want, you want to play? You want to play? Oh, shit, you're dead. Um, um, shit, I'm not done. Stop! Ah, oh, I missed! No, no, I must continue in afterlife! Uh. Like, it almost sounds like a Monty Python sketch. Like, it as does. horrible as it is to say that, it uh, just, oh my god. It does. It's like, again, like like I said, I, I feel bad for the family. They're, they're, they've, they've, yeah, a lot of bad shit happened to them. But... I, I have to admit that the premise behind the, 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 his reasoning behind it is really silly. Oh, but uh, you know, regardless of the circumstances. But oh god, the last one. We're coming back to Florida. It's the one next. Florida. Yes, down near uh, no, down near uh, Fort Pierce. A 49-year-old woman found herself in a pile of trouble after investigators linked her to an apparent human poop in an elevator at the St. Lucie Courthouse in downtown Fort Pierce. Okay, good, because I was about to, to criticize their um, their grammar there by saying a pile of – oh, okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Uh, the case against Patricia Ann Jameson of Lake Worth got rolling March 7th after court security staff learned of what looked to be human fecal matter in the corner of the left public elevator by the buttons. 
A deputy reviewed security footage to see the last person in the elevator. The investigator spotted a woman in black and white zebra-striped pants and a black shirt get on the elevator on the first floor, exiting on the second. She walked away before getting on the left elevator. The deputy reported that before the doors closed, the woman appears to pull her pants down and back up toward the interior elevator buttons, consistent with someone using the bathroom. This is what the records are stating, by the way. What? The elevator arrived on the first floor. The female was seen on camera fixing her pants and pulling her shirt out of her pants as if she pulled her pants up over her shirt. And this line right here. Oh, dear. I, I This is one of the reasons why I put this in. Because they had, they had to put this in for whatever reason. Feces, also known as order, dung, stool, poo-poo, and feculence, typically is found in commodes or cow pastures as opposed to public elevators. You know, you know what that was? That was the journalist saying, can I say shit? And the copy editor saying, no. You can say this word, this word, this word, this word, this word, but you can't say shit. So that journalist wanted to make damn sure that you knew. That he wanted to say shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's what that was. And the editor was like, fine, fuck it. Just publish it. I don't give a shit. Just go. Yes. So shitty. There's so many <laughs> shit you've... Oh, God. Well, shit. Well, she was arrested on March 11th on a misdemeanor warrant for health and sa- health safety nuisance injurious to health charge. It's gross, but it was also in the corner. Mm. But... But I, but I can see where they're coming illegal. from. Yeah, I think it is. You I think, can't I think, do that in public. No, 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 you can't. You you really can't. Like, I mean, I guess it was one thing, like, if she was having, like, you know, a health matter at that point in time. And, like, then, you know, tell somebody, like, you know, something really went wrong. You know, but the, it kind of seems from the way they describe it, like, she did it deliberately. Yeah, I, I really wish... I, I admit, I kind of want to find out what her reasoning was behind it. Like, why would you do that? I mean, it, it's it's just, I mean, well, did you have a house? Maybe she, like, you know, had an issue with a judge or public defender or something. Like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll show you. <laughs> no, that, see, if you're going to do something like that at a courthouse in protest of a judge or somebody like that, you do it on their desk. Oh, well, okay, assuming you're going to do it at all, which... How would you really get should... access to... Excuse me, can I see your office for a second? I promise nothing will go wrong. Right. I just, I just want to leave him a sticky note. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Aren't you glad you have me on the show? Yes, I am. <laughs> oh, so... One last story. We got one. We got time for one more story out of all of this. And where is that one? Because this one is also in Florida. Um, Jesus Christ. Yes, this is another one of Florida, another Florida weeks here. Yay. Um, dum, dum, da, da, do, do. Okay, here we go. Out of Miami. We, we started, we started in the taint. We ended up in Miami. So it's like, it's like, wait. So with with the possible exception, okay. If you follow the tubing in the anatomy class properly and assume that that Fort Walton Beach and Pensacola are about where the balls meet the taint, or where the balls meet up, and then you go through there, go through St. Lucie County and out through Miami, I, I think Florida is pretty much ejaculating us at this point. See, I don't remember anything from health class of male anatomy except the vast difference, and I don't really know where it is or what it does, just that guys have one. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> oh, so so Miami, and this one's gonna piss off some people. Um, a 73-year-old Miami man who is also a registered sex offender. Oh, we Here got we go. those down. Faces charges of attempted second-degree murder, arson, and committing a hate crime after he allegedly tried to burn down a home with two women and eight children inside because the women are lesbians. I heard about this actually. Yeah, Miami. Right about it, oh my god. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I might have been where I got it too. Uh, but uh, Miami Dade police said Brolo Vene- Valenzuela Villa whatever entered the lot next door to the not lot next door to his on whatever address and allegedly set fire to a mattress that was leaning against the wall of the trailer occupied by the women and children. Police said uh, as the fire began to get worse, the defendant hurried back to his residence. Fire began to burn the trailer, but there was no smoke detectors inside. 
police from across the street saw the fire. Well, actually, a neighbor saw the saw the the fire from across the street and began to alert people of the impending danger. And they all – the women and children, they all escaped after being awakened by a neighbor, and the, the guy came out of his home and casually began observing the fire. In fact, one of his neighbors had to compel him to exist, bringing a garden hose to fight the fire. Yeah, that's not suspicious at all. Mm-hmm. I, I could just see I could just see him his, his attitude, you know, showing that well, it's just a couple of lesbians in there. Who the fuck cares? You know, you know, the trailer was burned. That that the trailer that was burned sustained considerable damage, and they caught the. There's actually surveillance video that was recorded by another neighbor that captured the dude setting the mattress on fire, and several neighbors identified him. So he he was not getting away. And according to the arrest report, after being told of his rights, he didn't admit to setting the fire, never mind the fact that he is caught on video. Yeah, pretty much. But he did say he despised the two adult victims for the simple fact that they were lesbians. Further, he stated every time he saw them kissing, he felt a deep repugnance, and in his opinion, they did not deserve to have children. Well, sir, you do not deserve to have your freedom, and you're sitting in jail. See, when people say stuff like, Oh, people are allowed to say whatever they want. It's freedom of speech. Right, freedom of speech. Words don't hurt anybody. Yeah, and then stuff like this happens, you know? Or people, like, go and shoot Senator Gifford, you know? Like, mm-hmm. I fucking hate yeah. this country. Yeah, it, it, the words themselves can be harmless. It's what you do because of those words or, or the consequences of those words. Like, people be crazy, yo. We already know this. And I yes. don't mean people suffering from mental illness. I mean people be crazy, yo. I just, I mean, that's what, like, nine counts of attempted murder right there, plus arsons. That makes it, it's because it's attempted murder, murder is a felony. That makes it, that makes it, um, felony arson, right? Mm -hmm. I think so. I just, And actually, that's ten charges of attempted murder, because there were eight children. Oh, okay, I thought there were seven. Nope, there are eight children in there. Thankfully, they got all, all got out okay. But I'm sure he's sitting there in prison like, (laughs) yeah, show them. Show them dykes well as well. <laughs> They're not going to be in my neighborhood when I get out of here. Yeah, you're not getting out of there. Well, they're still out of that neighborhood. They're actually living in your old place now. What? <laughs> like, seriously, would... people people will hear about this and the fact that they have no place to live, and they'll say, oh, well, you know what? Uh, I can I can give $100 towards getting a new trailer. People will, you know, the, the Red Cross will be like, well, you know, we can give you a place to stay. And, and so, you know, people will help them because you're an asshole. Yes. So yeah, you're you're just yeah, you lose, sir. And plus, I'm gonna get you. Know you I'm gonna get you hate mail. Be, you know, somebody is going to be like, wait, he had a problem with two lesbians. Stereotypically, he's a dude. He should be turned on by that. I know, right? You know, if you want to go with stereotypes. Oh, but you know, hey, you know, he he's a sick fuck and he's in prison. Thank well, jail so far. I'm sure he's going to be moved to prison. Eventually, and that's good. He needs to stay there. So with with all of that, that is going to be our show for this week. Thank you guys for listening. Thank and you for being offended right along with us. Yes. <laughs> oh God. So uh, we do, we do have a few news stories that will be safe for next week because I think they're kind of kind of important and big that that do need to be covered. Hopefully, the ones that I do have. The, the bigger ones that I do have, maybe they'll be resolved by then, and if so, we'll let you know that it was as well. But uh, we will save them for next week. So uh, if we wanted to find Omega on social media, where could we find her? Uh, you can find me at The Omega Geek on Twitter. Uh, my website is TheOmegaGeek.com. Uh, my stuff can be found on Blip. It's Blip, The Omega. Um, uh, on write articles, and eventually someday I'll figure out how to get Lesbian Talk to publish on Nerdvice. Um, and I think that's it. I'm also on Archie Gomer, and so I think that's all the sites I'm on. Yeah, yeah. And, and of course, and of course. did you mention that Lesbian oh, yeah, Talk you, is also on That Guy with the Glasses? Yes. <laughs> you can find Lesbian Talk once a week uh, on That Guy with the Glasses. It's a different day each time, depending on their scheduling systems, but yeah, we're yes. there. Yes, and if, and if you wanted to get the MP3s for Lesbian Talk, you go to That Guy with the Glasses for that one. Cause, yeah, and cause the older I, I, ones are also available on my site. Or download yes. as MP3, so I just had yes. Well, yeah, yeah. Your site, that guy with the glasses, because I, I, uh, I don't know. Should I? I? I feel like maybe I should put the MP3 links when I put them up on the site on, on my site too. But 
But but that that's stuff that we can talk off air about. Uh, if you wanted to find me on any kind of social media, you can find me on Twitter, Tumblr at Gomer Two One Double X. Uh, you can find my stuff, of course, at rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. And hopefully, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, hopefully soon we'll be able to find this show on iTunes as well. Fingers crossed. Here's hoping. iTunes. Yes. Oh, God. And, of course, if you want if you want to help support the show for new equipment or new things in general or just to help get to a point to where I could get food on my own and not have to live with my folks or what, or for whatever reason – uh, you can toss money at me over at patreon.com slash gomer two one double x. Five dollars gets you early access to videos and also I'm doing a series of videos simply for patrons. It's basically one off one off uh gameplay videos. The patrons suggest it and then I do it for them and it's for them only. So if you wanted to see what I've done for them, well, you know, five dollars a month. <laughs> Uh, and that doesn't take away from any of my normal stuff as well, which there's going to be plenty of that. And in fact, I'm finishing up a series right now that was actually made possible with, you know, because of my patrons over on Patreon right now. So uh, that that's that's a very good thing. And speaking of Patreon, uh, if you want to also throw money at my wonderful, lovely girlfriend, who is an award-winning animator and damn good title card artist as well, uh, head over to patreon.com slash Becky Hop and toss some money at her, and you'll get some artwork out of her. Which is I like awesome. it. Like, she's like, you like, like, here, catch. And she's like, opens her window, and like, a $5 bill comes through. She's like, oh, great. Yes. <laughs> that would be awesome. That would be, that would be awesome. I could just open if I, I wish, just I wish that's how window. PayPal really worked. I know, right? <laughs> Look at this. Yes. It's so good. Yes. So, uh, and and one I do I do want to put out one final note on Patreon though. If you guys have any suggestions about, about like rewards or what have you that I could that I could offer through Patreon or what have you, please feel free to send them in because I'm always looking for suggestions. Um, and 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 of course, once I build up enough money to get to a certain point, I will have things like you know maybe T-shirts or or something, maybe coffee mugs or what have you. I, I, it, it's something to figure out, but I've got to be able to reach that point first. So, but we'll we'll see what can happen there. But I will I do take ideas if I think it's a good one, I'll run with it. So uh, anyway, that's enough of me rambling and whoring myself out, and we will get out of here and we will see you next week. But until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with the Omega signing off. Bye. Thespian Talk is an Archie Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.